Alright, Samedi. Today, I'm going to practice the concertino, the chaminade concertino. So, um, I'm going to start and I'm going to go little bit by bit and explain how to practice it, where I would breathe, where, how I would practice it, um, all types of different things. If you have any questions, comments, you can leave them while uh, we're doing this because it's a live stream. And uh, so let's start. thing my flute is in repair so I'm not used to play with that flute so uh, there's little things that are new for me um, so in the beginning it's mezzo forte it's written dolce but I wouldn't go too soft because um, you're a soloist and it's a beginning so you don't want to look shy it's more soft in the in the feeling than than it is in the projection it needs to project but it needs to be um, soft in the sense of uh, feeling soft not, not not aggressive so that's the first thing on bar five there's a breath that suggested that there if you don't have to i wouldn't take it i would take a bigger breath in the beginning but if you have to it's a good it's a good spot at the end of bar six i would take a big breath there because you have half a beat and also the piano part there it, it's there's nothing so you could also just give another cue if you take a s tiny bit more time you could even give a little cue to the pianist to go again so you could go so you give again so you make sure you're together that's a good spot and then the next good spot would be bar 11, but I don't know, yeah, bar 9, well, there's a lot of good spots after that, because at uh, 8, 9, 10, the piano goes with quarter notes, so you have time, you have time, there's nothing there that's that difficult, I'll do it again. And I'll see where I where I would breathe. I'll do it from the beginning. now um, I would say um, yeah I took a breath after the first note at 9 and then I took another one at bar 11 and another one at bar 12 um, after the longer notes also I tried to do some dynamics so when you get to bar 7 uh, dolce so I go a bit softer but there's a decrescendo so not too soft and then I do the crescendo again go back to mezzo forte then it gets pretty intense at 11 so you can go for it and also vibrate but all, all throughout the piece vibrato is a good thing to use and yeah just shape your phrases go you know um, bring the phrase up and down just follow the line and uh, that's it. So I'll take it again from bar 11 so we can hear the difference between that that intense forte there and at 
15 when it gets piano it's it's quite uh, subito there's a little decrescendo before but I think it's interesting if there's a change in color there the difference in the dynamics there um, then maybe at 16 I would try to be a bit more nervous on those those little grace notes uh, I'll do it again from 15 with a little accent so I give it a little uh, Tonguing on the on the um, on the grace note on the first one. Ta ta da di da 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 ta ya ta ya. But it's it's not too much. Just enough to hear the accent there. And after that, really, it's only a D major scale. I know you start on a on a on a C sharp, but still look at it as a D major scale you can practice it from the D sharp start just doing a D major scale like this the other octave then both then um, do the same thing but starting with the C sharp and stop at the A, so at the second octave A. This way, that's that's the register you're playing in that that D major scale, and then. used to play with that with that uh, flute I don't know it's a bit different um, okay so that's a way to practice it uh, then you can practice it all tongued sometimes when it's all slurred and I want to make sure I hear every note I practice it all tongued so slower <laughs> And of course, when you get on 19, it, there's a key change, so you have to play a, a B flat, which is unexpected. So um, yeah, maybe when you when you go after the after the C sharp, you can put your thumb right away on the B flat key. This way you'll you'll be ready to play your, your B flat on 19. So you can even practice it like uh, whoops. So I go from low D sharp to high B flat because that's what I'm gonna play just there. And I go up and down like I would do it for any scale. I can even do it with rhythms like this. Opposite rhythm. Instead of ta 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 with this long short long short long, you go short long short long ta 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 ta. You can also practice with a metronome. So let's say I start at seventeen. I'm gonna get to 72, I think. 72 might be a good 
temple, maybe a bit slow. That's 88. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's better. So. So I'll start at 60. No, I'll start at 50. So. practice that spot and all the other spots that are a bit similar to that one there's a lot of them during the piece so I'll start again at 19 and when I will get to 20 I'll give a little tonguing on those accents the same I did when I was at 16 okay so I go uh, I'll do the exact same thing because it's it's the exact same thing musically just in another key because well, I'm relearning it I learned it when I was younger 20 years ago maybe and um, I'm relearning it because I'm gonna play it in a concert in February so I'll have to relearn that and I haven't looked at it during all those years um, so here at just before Poco Stringendo at 21 I would practice the same way so here really it's a B flat major scale okay because yeah, it's a B-flat major scale, so you can practice it like this. And then the other octave. Both. Then you can go from the lowest note in that section to the highest one. So it starts on a, on a D, low D, and it goes up to a high B. So you can practice it like this. And then uh, I would practice it with a metronome, same thing as I did. When you practice with a metronome, even when you're you're at tempo, always go back to s practicing slower because it gives you control. So even when you know the piece, personally, that's how I do. I always go go back to practicing slowly, so I, I get control back. Because if I just play fast all the time, my fingers just start going on their own volition instead of me being in control. So I'll do that part. That's it. Uh, as you see, it, it's a cha key change again at 23. And um, so at the end, I wouldn't use the thumb for the B flat anymore. I would use the fingering here with the index finger because I have to go to the B just after. Some people are very comfortable switching. I'm not, so I pick which fingering I'm going to take. So I'm going to do that again at 60 this time. Again. 
I think I'm not sure it's that important to give the the low Ds. I'll try to to give them, but really the high the high um, B natural is important. I'm gonna check what's going on with the piano just there. So that's twenty one. So the piano is doing quarter notes. So it's easy for the pianist to follow me if if I do something. It's not like it's got a lot of stuff to do. I'm not gonna change the rhythm or anything. It's just this way I can take a bit more time. Maybe if I wanna tongue properly that note or. Okay, so that's the first thing. So that was my, my E flat major scale there, how I would practice that. Now I am at 23 and key change, I'm going to play it once. Okay, now I remember. So um, I would start by practicing those, that uh, first bar. I'll start, I'll, I'll start by two. So I go two, 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 and then three. Also important here on 23 on the first um, the first G I would start with ka not with ta because I would go ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta so my ta are on on the strong beats or on the notes that are on the strong beat and my ka are on on the upper part so I I have to start with a ka so ta ka ta Kata on the first G, ka and then ta because I'm on the on the beat. So um, I'll do it again, but I'll do it with the the first note. like in the beginning when I said it was a D major scale, it's a D major scale, except on 25, the second part of the bar is a C major scale, and then it goes back to D major. So it's C major, D, uh, D major, C major, D major again. So when you think like that, it's easier because you don't have to think about each individual note, you think about a key. So I go and I think, for example, at 25, I see I have a B, and I go down to a low E, and I'm just playing in D major, so I have an F sharp and a, and a C sharp, and that's it. I don't have to think about each individual note. I, I just think about that that movement there, you know, that word. It's like, yeah. And then um, on the second part, I'm like, okay, it's a C major scale that starts on a C and ends on an E. And then I go back in D, and I start on a C sharp. Then I go down, back up, I go down to the C sharp, and I go back up to the high D. But it's always, it's still D major. So if you think like that, you can learn it faster because you don't have to look at each individual note as being something of their own. Instead, you, you see the, the whole thing. Then by grouping, your brain has less to, uh, to worry about. Okay. So I'll do again from the key change at 23. I'll do it at, si at 50. I'll do it the same as I did for the rest. Whoops, I was not precise on the beat there. So I'll start again at 25. Because I have to be on the beat on my E and then on, on the E again on the 
third and fourth, uh, second and fourth beat, beats. Oh, okay, so it's ta, one, two, three, one, and then ta, one, two, three, four, one. So I have to start a little bit earlier on the third beat than on the first beat. So I have to be careful with that. So on 26, where I have a, like you have 11 notes per beat, uh, the piano doesn't have anything. It goes plang, boom, when you start the second beat, and then you do it as, as you feel. And then when you go back on the high D on 28, uh, 27, it goes back, tom, pom, pom, pom with you. So you don't have to worry too much. It's almost a cadence. So what I did is in my part, I wrote at bar 26, I wrote almost a cadence. And this way I'm, I'm free. Or you could write free, or you could write no piano, or you could also write the rhythm of the piano. So uh, quarter note, quarter note, and then that's it. You wait, the piano waits, and it gets back with you at 27. So I'll take more time for that when I'll be playing it without the metronome because it's not metronomic, it's just... Uh, so I'll do again 25 at 60 this time. Okay, so I was pretty much with the metronome with that. 72, we'll see. start at 23 so whatever I'll start at 23 but at 88 at the real tempo I'm, I'm doing and I'll go all the way to a tempo okay so I see that I have a tendency a bit too slow on the first notes at 23 and then uh, so I have to be careful with that I'll do it again at 60 just to practice it once the same spot and then I'll do it again at the real tempo Seven, it's fortissimo so it's the loudest it, it has been since the beginning so I'll do the bar before you can even take a little bit of time on the C sharp the low C sharp and go back up I'll try that ah uh, no not too much time than my flute and I don't know there's something wrong when I do that I miss one note there's a note that I don't hear when I do it I miss the D 
I won't practice it too much because I uh, I started using a thumb port. It helps, and uh, I forgot in my flute case when I left my flute for repair. So I'm not gonna practice on it too much because I might just hurt myself and there's no point because when I'm gonna get my flute back I'll see how how it feels um, so I'll do that again and I'll try to tongue the the high D at uh, 28 uh, 27 piano goes da, 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 di, da, di, 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 da, di. and then the piano does a little tremolo and we go and we come in at 33 on an upbeat and it has to sound like an upbeat um, so make sure you feel really the da, 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 da. it's not da, da. The feeling of, of an upbeat is so different from the downbeat and here it's a syncop which is an upbeat that continues on a downbeat so you have to give it some feeling so um, I'll put my metronome I'll just sing it and if it was a downbeat it would be it's completely different and also for the pianist it's going to be very difficult to follow you if if the downbeats are not at, in the right place so be very careful with that so I'll play that part and see how I would practice it which was a mistake I think because at 41 it's written piano but not before and then also it's even specified sempre forte which is still forte sempre means uh, still so I'm gonna stay forte more than that yeah and uh, yeah I'm gonna try that again I think I'm gonna think it in in, uh, in half notes I'm gonna think it instead of thinking four beats I'm gonna think two beats it's gonna go like I'll try it like this. I subdivide in my head, but I think my beat's a bit long, bigger, you know? Again, not used to little changes like that sometimes it's there's something I usually don't have problems with those things okay again with no metronome because I'm going to do the stringendo. Stringendo means faster. Like it means it means that it's getting um, closer from each other.
forget to breathe there. So I'll start again from 41 where it's piano. Um, um, okay. Okay, I'll do it again from there. I'll use the metronome. Um, after the first note of the bar, just between the two first notes. So I had something else written when I played it a long time ago, but I think it's more comfortable to breathe there. So ta 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 Okay, so the trio on 42, I'm gonna do so the E goes to the F and the F is on the first beat so I do it really at the end but on 44 it's different because um, it goes body it doesn't go on the first beat of the next bar so I think I'm gonna end it on the fourth beat I'm gonna go one two three E and F one two three E F and I'm gonna stop on the F there I'm gonna try that and then I'm gonna try something else. So I think that's okay. I think I'm gonna play it like that. I'm gonna do it again. straightforward just be careful with the tonguing to really do and when you when you do the repeated notes at 57 be careful to really tongue it so we can hear that there are two of them so it's clear the so it doesn't go that you know that little because it's repeated notes so you have to be even more clear on the articulation there And here again, when you start on the D, that, that descending passage, you start with a K. Ka, ka, ka. Ta, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta. So you, you, your ta will be on the, on the first note of the beat. So ta, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, 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 there's a upbeat there that's important to make to make it sound like it's it's not the same rhythmically so I'll do it again from 47 I don't know if you heard, but he, at uh, 
52, when there's piano, I try to change the color ra radically, you know, so I'll do 51, 52. So after the E, color change there. I was just thinking, there I decided to do a little, to do the E shorter, but in the music it's written legato. So I, I'm gonna try it without, without stopping in between, see what I prefer. a bit easier to to stop between the two notes even if it's written legato I don't know if it's something the composer wrote if it's something the editor wrote and uh, anyways the score is more like a blueprint and then you have to make decisions that make the music sound as best as it can so if I sound better playing it like that I guess I'm gonna play it like that <laughs> so now I'm gonna start after the two bars of silence at 57 So here that's a, that's a B-flat uh, arpeggio, B-flat major arpeggio, so you can practice it. So. to breathe um, so 50. I usually try to look in the music in the piano score when I'm figuring out where to breathe because if the piano is not doing much it's not the same as if it's playing with me at each note um, you have to check what's easier also for the pianist to be able to follow you that breathe just anywhere so uh, 55 So I'm going to take one at 60, a big one there during the rest. And then what's there? Oh, I have a lot of time on 66. Because piano has two, two uh, beats that are completely... I might take it after the I have the high F. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna see if I like it because I had the breath written at 68 after the low D. Now that I think about it, 20 years after, I don't like it. It breaks the phrase. But if I go like this and I have an octave, so I'm really gonna try to um, fill it up, you know, when it's a big uh, interval, I try to fill it up more, give it more intention, give it more air. So I'm gonna try that. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna keep it there. So I'm gonna try from uh, from 57 again. Oh yeah, dolce, dolce, soft.
touch it. Um, I like that breath that I put just after the high F because there's time with the piano. You can go da 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 And the pianist should get back with you on your last beat, you know? You don't have to exaggerate it, but still you're free there. There's no piano. So I'm even gonna write the rhythm down that there are two beats of rest there. So I have time. So it's like this. I often write in my music what's going on with the piano. And uh, yeah, this way. This way when I'm playing, I know what's going on. I know if I have to be really in time, if I can take a bit more time, especially in a, in a, play in a piece like this one. So now, uh, I hope you heard also the little dynamics I made and I tried to change the color and uh, do the ralentendo and all those things. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go back for a second because I think I forgot to tell you at 33 there was più animato e agitato. It means faster, really. That's what that's what it means. More agitated and more animated, more. So that's something I forgot to say because I talked about the stringendo and there was another one at 62, and then yeah, there's a ralentendo at 70, and uh, piano espressivo. So give it some. Give it some color and give it some vibrato at 70 with your piano espressivo. I'll do um I'll do from 66. with your intonation because it's so easy to go you have to keep it up you know stream a little bit higher there. Okay, now the triplets. Um, can I... Uh, yeah. Can I see the time? Sure. Sorry. Yeah, here you go. Okay. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish it today. I'm gonna do a part of it. It's actually part of the requirements for California state uh, auditions this year. It's the only piece that they need to play to get into all state. Okay. Um, one of the sections is what you, the beginning. Do people hear you right now? A little bit, but okay. it's okay. Um, you did beginning to C already, I'm sure. I don't have letters. I have bar numbers. Okay. Um, I don't have letters. I don't know what their C is. Oh, okay. Um, Do, yeah. They don't have bar numbers? Maybe no, it's another it's edition? Solid, it is another edition. Yeah, yeah. there's also one bar after G. Could you imagine what G could be one bar after? Maybe it's the... I know in the uh, blue book, in this book, they have, yeah, numbers. G. Hmm. One bar after. So is there something that's important one bar after from something? It's probably uh, hmm. the second page, but it's, I also think, I think I can find it. Hold on. Okay. So I'll continue with the yeah. triplets. Okay. So first thing, uh, when you do that, Instead of doing the real D fingering, just do the trill finger here. I know it's a bit out of tune, but at that speed, no one will know, you know, it's like... thing. Use that trill finger here. It's not that out of tune, it's just, yeah, it's fine. So that, 
Uh, you can practice in many different ways. You can practice it with a metronome. You start slowly, you go faster. You can practice it with rhythms. You can practice it slurred by three, all tongued. Um, I'm gonna do it with rhythms. So I'm gonna go ta di da 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 di da 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 da. So one long, two short. Uh, two short, one long. Da di da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's where the triplets are. It's from triplets where our tempo is. Yeah, our that's tempo. G. Yeah, that's G. Okay. Uh, one bar after G. I mean, that's uh, that's that's where it starts. The second, the second at those triplets is one bar after G. So that's a uh, bar before that is G, where it says ritondo. So that's what they have to do. They yeah, one bar after. They don't G. do the 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 fast part. The triplets, da -la, da -la, da -la, da they da -la, don't do that. They, they do, do it. Yeah, they do. Oh, they don't do the beginning then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't play the. They, they skip play. the beginning. They play. Okay, there's two sections. There's from beginning to C. You already probably did that. Yeah. And then the second part that they have to play is from what I just told you. One bar after the rotondo where those triplets are, right? The where the triplets begin. Yeah. From B to. Yeah. Whatever. Until. Until. Um, you right where that high A is before a bar of rest. Mm. When it say, goes okay, ta 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 ta. Yeah, ta 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 ta. Okay, yeah, so that part. That's all they do. Okay. That's a requirement. So we can just talk about that for now. Yeah, I think for today I'm gonna stop at that ta 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 ta, and then maybe next time I'll go from there to the, till the end. Yeah. Because it's quite long and yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a long enough video and we'll do a part two of that. Okay, so I was saying I'm going to play um, ta. Uh, okay, so I did ta di da 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 da. I'm going to do the opposite. Ta da 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 da. So it's short, long, short. So the long one is the one in the middle of the group of three. So I go da 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 Once like ta di da ta 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 ta, group by three. I I'll tongue each each group. That one. Oh my god, it's getting I'm getting tired. So with that one here, my B flat, it's because my first choice when I do the B flat is 
this key behind the flute. But my second choice is this one here, and my third choice is this one. So I don't know if you see very well. So first choice is the thumb, second one is the little key here, because it's a bit lighter, it's a bit faster than this one. You have to do a bigger movement here than there, and it sounds better. So that's why I usually take that one when I can. Um, now I'm gonna do it once. Okay, so back in the days I played at 104. Okay, that's fast for me today that I haven't practiced it. I'm gonna start. You know, you could start it by playing it, uh, put your metronome for each eight note this way. Let's say I do it at 100 for each eight note, it goes like this. piano and it's a good idea to play piano especially because it will take you less air you heard I tried to do the accents at 75 76 and also when it becomes forte I started playing louder so now I'm gonna play it at 80 uh, I'll do it again and I'll try to give a little tonguing on that bar again. I'll do it fast without a metronome. Here I'm, I'm loud but I didn't really play loud. So I'm gonna do it again and yeah I'm gonna be careful because when I went down in that chromatic scale at the end of 76 there was one note missing. Usually when that happens, I try to identify it and focus more on that specific note. with that little third in the um, in triplets so 
So I'm doing it in mirror. I'm going one way and then I'm reading it backwards. And I'm I'm tonguing it. So I'm, I'm seeing it as two, two movements, one that goes, uh, it's really, it's a, it's a B chord, um, B major with a diminished fifth and a minor seventh. And then I go all the way up to the high A. And then I see it as da -da, another word, the, the D, D sharp and the E. So. Okay, so I'm gonna start from 80. I'm gonna do it once slowly at uh, 60. It's piano, okay? at 104 okay that's good and you saw I did the crescendo and the bayam with the high E it's still forte it, it becomes piano on the D so that's important it's not it's Okay, so you see that, and I was wondering um, where I'm gonna breathe there, because that whole part from uh, 73, there's not much space, so I'm gonna figure this out. I think I'm gonna cut a little bit of the first E there, that's slurred from 72. I'm gonna cut a little bit of that. Um, and then the piano goes pum 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 It has eight notes all the time, so I don't have much time, except at six, seven, eight, seventy-eight. I have time because the piano goes two eight notes and then silence. So I'm gonna write it down at seventy-eight, two eight notes, and then silence for three beats and then it starts again on the trill piano starts again and it uh, yeah yeah so what I could do wait 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 I'm gonna go so at 75, I take one small one with the accents. And then I take a tiny one there too at 77 after the first note. I don't have much time because there the piano is going to go boom, boom. So either I tell the pianist, can you please wait for me because I'm going to breathe or I don't breathe there. Um, and then when I'm doing my long trill at 79, it's still playing eight notes. Plus it's a bit weird to stop in the middle of a trill. Hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm going to go, I'm going to try it. Yeah, in my music.
music. Uh, so I took a little breath between, but I don't know if I need it. Really? Hmm. <laughs> between the two G sharps I'm gonna breathe and then at 80 I have one just after my first uh, 16 note I'm not gonna take it there I'm gonna take it just before the B so I'm gonna go and then I'm gonna be way better with the pianist it's gonna be way easier for her or him to uh, follow me so I trill and then and for the accent it's gonna be better than going Like, why, when I have all this time? And here I go. I'll breathe a little bit between, um, just after those, those um, staccatos on A, the, the high one, I go. And the piano plays the exact same rhythm there, so it's important to be in time. Okay, so hmm. I'll go from 80. here when I go in the six tuplets um, doesn't play for it plays a um, half note and then it plays on the third beat it comes with me so it goes pum 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 so if I were to play it a little bit slower the pianist would be able to uh, to accommodate me you know that's not what I'm looking for but if that if it's a necessity it's a cool thing to know. So, 84. Okay. Here too, uh, as I said earlier, it starts on an upbeat. That's important because playing is completely different from Okay? So that's important. Um, so, 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 it's the same thing. I'll practice it once, I'll slurred, and then I'll practice it uh, staccato. Here it's how I do the EF. It's the same thing as I did just before. I'll take the breath before the B. Uh, the so I go the trill, trill, I breathe. And I go again. So, for that whole part, um, the piano goes boom, ching, boom, ching, eight notes, eight notes. Uh, except um, at 98, it's quarter notes. Well, it's quarter notes. Half note, quarter note, that's what you will hear. So it goes. Pum, pum, pum. So it goes. Pum, so it doesn't play everywhere. Look at the score because the way I explain it might not be as, as clear as when you look at it. Um, okay. Yeah, pum, pum. So at ninety, at eighty nine, 
at 89 the piano plays two eight notes on the first two notes and then doesn't play for three beats so you're free here and it comes back with you with eight notes on 90. Okay, so for breathing there, it's gonna be, um, I'll do it, I think I'm gonna breathe when I have an eight note, just after my eight notes. I don't have much other choice. I'm gonna start piano, do the crescendo, the forte and all those things. Ah, oh, here I tend to do an A instead of a C. Okay. For the breathing part that I was trying something it's a bit like what we just saw it's kind of the same thing twice here as what we had um, yeah oh it's quite similar the way it's it's constructed so I'm gonna breathe also at so at 90 I breathe after my trill and before I do the B and then on 92 I breathe between the two eight notes um, and then at 95, you see, 95, uh, where is it on my piano part? Okay, at 95, the piano has a big whole note. So it just plays the first beat and then it waits. So I'm gonna breathe after the first note. I'm gonna play my low E and then I'm gonna breathe. So I'll do 94, 95, it goes. <laughs> It goes da 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 da. I think, yeah, exactly. So, um, that's for the breathing part. Then for practicing, I think I would practice with rhythms, um, and also with a metronome, and changing the changing the um, articulations. I'm gonna start by practicing it once, quite slowly at fifty. So I was redoing it because I was not satisfied with it. I thought it was it was lacking some nervousness because there's something a bit nervous about it. If it's too, uh, it needs to have some spunk. Yeah, spunk. because I was not very happy with it so now I'm gonna play it at 72 usually I would go a bit slower but it's just for demonstration so 72 <laughs> I'll do it again this part is a bit tricky sometimes
so when I play it at 95, I know that in real life I'm gonna breathe and then go go freely, but after I breathe, it kind of mixes up my rhythm, so I, I redo it with the metronome just to make sure it's got some kind of logic to it with the, the speed. I'm gonna check at um, 86 first, because 86 is a bit tricky, so I'll, I'll play it slurred by two. <laughs> No, no, no. by two um, and then I did slurred by two again but I slurred the two other ones that weren't slurred together in the first place so instead of taya tia 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 I went taya ta ha ta ha ta ha um, so that's it I'll do it at 104 I'll try <laughs> I'll do it without a metronome because I'm thinking about it. At 95, I want to take my little breath there and all those things. So. As you can hear, I still have a lot of work to do with that. Um, I would work a lot on 86, 87 because that's a spot where uh, I tend to um, get a bit uh, not so clear. And then I would also work on 95 to make that a bit better. I would start from 94 like this. <laughs> about it as um, groups of four it's gonna be easier thumb ta da da ta da 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 ta 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 so Maybe I would have to blow a bit more towards the crescendo and make sure it's... Ah, and I'm gonna put a bit more emphasis on the first notes of the beat. I think that was better. There, there still needs to be work done. I was not happy with I would practice it again and 86 87 also I would practice it again and probably um, what I'm gonna do 
in the next few days when I take my flute out, I'm going to practice those little parts first as a, almost as a technique exercise. And I can practice it different ways. <laughs> So I practice by little bits, then I make bigger parts. Yeah. So uh, that's it, really. Take the metronome, take your time, go by little parts. Um, maybe my chunks were a bit too big for you because I've played that a long time ago, but still I've played that before. Um, and uh, I might be learning a bit quicker because I've done more scales and stuff like that and learned more pieces. So take time, take your time, really. Like, take your time. Um, it's better to do less and do it well, and it's learned well from the beginning than learn bad notes and then you have to undo the bad notes and relearn the good notes, you work twice as hard. So uh, when you're tired, just stop because you're going to learn mistakes. Um, so that would be it. Try to really see the words instead of each, each note. Try to group notes together in a meaningful way. So, uh, oh, here's a E, e, uh, e uh, minor arpeggio. Here's a, this scale. Here's a chromatic scale. Here's... And this way, it's it's less work for your brain. Um, so that's it for today. Next time, I'm gonna go from there till the end, and eventually, I'm gonna probably post a version, uh, like more uh, probably like concert or a bit more um, recorded. recorded version, not just practicing it. Um, so I hope this helped. If you have any question or comment, um, please uh, leave them in the comment box below. If you liked it, please like it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.